What I'm about to say might sound silly, but I'm going to say it anyway. One of the easiest ways to improve productivity is by having a good shell prompt. I, for example, tend to have a minimal prompt that shows only the pending actions I need to perform. That means that most of the time, the only information shown in my prompt is the current directory, which in this case is .files demo. It is a boring prompt by design. However, let's see what happens if I start a devbox session, switch to a branch and create a Kubernetes cluster. My prompt changed. And now I know that I'm working with a Kubernetes cluster, which I might need to destroy when I'm done, that I'm in the something branch, which I should merge to the mainline or create a pull request, and that I'm in a devbox session, which I should exit when I'm done. That way, my prompt is kind of a reminder of the tasks I should perform sooner or later, while at the same time, it gives me the information I might need. It is minimalistic when there is nothing special for me to do, yet informative when there are pending actions. Your goals will differ and I will not try to convince you to use the same approach. Instead, I want to show how you can customize your prompt to fit your needs. We will do that with Starship, which is a customizable shell prompt. Now, that is not new by itself and there are plenty of other tools that can customize prompts. What makes it special is the way customization works and the performance it provides. It is probably the easiest way to create custom prompts and at the same time, this is important, it is fast, lightning fast. Other similar tools I use in the past fail at at least one of those two aspects. They are either difficult to customize or slow. Starship is neither. Let's see it in action. Let's see what it really does. This is my prompt before I started using Starship. That's what I get from a virgin Mac that is not customized in any way. It is not very informative and frankly, it's ugly. All I have to do to convert it into something much more useful and much less ugly is to initialize Starship. Now I can see which directory I'm in, what is the current branch, uh, that I'm in a Nix shell and that I'm connected to a Google Cloud in US East 1. That's pretty useful, yet for me that prompt contains some misinformation and it is cluttered with information I do not need. I am using a Nix shell but indirectly through DevBox. Seeing impure is a bit misleading even though it is technically correct. I do not need to see the cloud region in my prompt and I do not care to know that I am working in the main branch. Fortunately, we can customize our prompt by changing Starship Toml file. We can do that manually or by applying one of the presets. We can, for example, switch to the bracketed segments preset. Having brackets in the prompt results for me in too much noise, so I will switch to plain text symbols preset. We can also switch to the pure preset, which is a minimalistic prompt. There are plenty of other prompts like Pastel Powerline, which makes it more colorful. Then there is Tokyo Night, which is a bit more minimalistic. For those of you who like information on the right side of the prompt, there is Jetpack and you know, so on and so forth. There are many others. One of the presets might be just what you need. Unfortunately, none of them is what I need. So I created my own. Let's take a look at the Starship toggle file that I created. The first thing you will notice is that Starship configuration is as simple as it can get. First, I'm telling it to move the cursor to the new line after the prompt. I prefer having a full line to type whatever I'm typing, so I prefer that any prompt information is above. Further on, I'm redefining few characters. I prefer arrow instead of the default greater than sign for the prompt. I also prefer a red cross for errors. The rest are configurations for specific tools or files. I don't care about packages like MPN, Gradle, Helm and others, so I disable them by setting disable true in the package section. I want to know when commands take more than 5000 milliseconds or 5 seconds to execute, so I'm showing the duration uh, in yellow. By default, I don't need any information about AWS, Azure, GCloud and Docker, so I disabled them as well. As you will see later, it's easy 
to enable any module if the need arises. I'm interested in branch information only when I'm not working on master or main branches, so I told it to ignore those. I do want to see statuses of what was changed in the Git repo I'm working on, but I'm not necessarily happy with the default icons, so I changed some of those as well. I disabled Golang and enabled Kubernetes. Since I tend to use DevBox to create Nix shells, I changed the impure message to DevBox and tweaked the format. Finally, I want to know if sudo credentials are cached, so I enabled that module as well. Now, that config might look overwhelming at first, but it is actually quite simple. We can disable or enable any module by setting disabled to true or false. We can format the output and we can change the symbols used to represent different states. That's all there is to it. Now, to apply such a configuration, all we have to do is write it inside config uh, starship toml file or since we already have it, simply copy the existing file. We can see that the prompt changed right away. There is only the information about the current directory, that I'm using a Nix shell and the arrow which indicates where I can type the next command and that the previous command was successful. Everything else in that configuration depends on the context and it will show additional information only under specific conditions. For example, the configuration defined that command duration should be displayed only if it takes more than 5 seconds. So let's run a command that takes more than that by executing sleep. And we wait for a while, wait and wait and there we go. The prompt was augmented with underwent 6 seconds message since the last command took more than 5 seconds to execute. Similarly, we defined that branch information should be displayed if uh, we are not in the master or main branches. So let's check out something. And there we go again. We can clearly see that we are inside the something branch and that we might need to merge it to mainline. If we switch back to the main branch, the branch information is gone. Right now I'm not connected to any Kubernetes cluster, so there is no information about that. So let's create one. And there we go. We can clearly see that we are connected to the kind kind cluster. If we delete the cluster, the Kubernetes information is gone. If we execute sudo command, we can see that there is a potential danger to mess up something since sudo credentials are not cached. Sometimes we might be confused with meaning of some of the modules within the current context. When that happens, we can show the output of a specific module like for example Nix shell. We can see that via devbox part of the prompt belongs to the Nix shell module. If we get confused what each part of the prompt means, we can simply ask Starship to explain the, the whole complete prompt. We can see that it starts with the current working directory, followed by the Nix shell environment, then the cached pseudo credentials, and finally the character or the arrow that indicates where we can type the next command. Now, one potential issue with Starship prompts can be performance. Even though Starship is faster than most prompts, it might still slow down the terminal if we have too many modules. To mitigate that, we can check how much it takes to assemble each part of the prompt by executing timings. We can see that, in this case, sudo and git status parts of the prompt are the slowest. If we want to improve performance, we can disable those modules or tweak the configuration to make them faster. Finally, we can toggle any module on or off. For example, if you do not want to see the information about Nix shell, we can toggle it off. Later on, if we do want to have that information back, we can toggle it on. The toggle command is a quick way to enable or disable any module without the need to edit the configuration file. We could accomplish the same outcome by changing disabled parameter inside Starship Toml file, but toggle is a quicker way to do it. That's all there is to it. Starship is a simple yet powerful tool that can help us create custom prompts that fit our needs. It is fast, it is easy to use and it can be customized to show only the information we need. Starship is what generates my prompts. You haven't seen it in any of my previous videos, mostly because I did not want to redirect your attention from subjects I was discussing. However, when I work on my projects, I always use Starship for my prompts. It's awesome and you should give it a try. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one, cheers.